Hello, we are going to look today at doing quadratic and exponential regressions in Excel 2016. It's fairly similar to Excel 2013, before that your particular mileage may vary. Um, so I've got some data here set up that I would like to do a quadratic regression for. Notice I've got two columns, temperature and tourists. Uh, so this is data for a place that they're trying to track see if there's any sort of connection between the temperature outside and the uh, number of tourists that come. And it's very easy to do different types of regression once you are, you are in that screen. Um, for the first thing that you need to do here is get a scatter plot. So highlight all of your data, including your, uh, your two titles for the columns. Go to Insert and Usually you can go to recommended chart. Sometimes you can go straight over here to a scatter plot. Um, recommended charts is, is a good friend to have when you're doing all sorts of data work in Excel. Uh, but I want to do a scatter plot. This is perfect. Um, note that you can have all of this. Uh, really, it's easily editable. So I've got tourists. I'm going to change the title on this. Uh, you, you always want to do Y versus X. So I've got tourists versus temperature because the tourists are number of tourists is my y-axis, the temperature is my x-axis. It's always y versus x. Um, anyway, the regression part. So if you click on the scatter plot, you will have three icons that pop up over here. Click on this plus, the chart elements. What we want to include is a trend line. And then I want to go over here, click check the box. And you see this guy kind of comes up over there, which isn't a good fit, really. Um, that's linear. We want something more than that. So if we're doing a quadratic, go to More Options, and then this guy pops up. What we want to do is a polynomial uh, regression here. And this is a quadratic uh, regression that we want to do. So it's a polynomial of the second order. So leave that as a 2. And down here you can set the equation on the chart and display the r squared value on the chart. This is really all the heavy lifting that has been done for us here. Let me make this guy a little bit bigger so that we can see this more clearly. You can also edit this if you wish. But right off the bat I've got um, my regression and the line that it fit for the data was y equals this 0.0298x squared minus 3.3505x plus 137.91. There you go. That is this line right here, and it's a fairly good fit. We can also look at that numerically by looking at your r squared value. The closer your r squared value is for one for the type of regression that you're doing, the more accurate it tends to be. So look, it's a pretty good fit, but also that R squared here, it's above 0.8. And above 0.8 is pretty good. Um, it's pretty strong, we would say. So this particular quadratic regression gives me a pretty good model that I can work from. Um, let's say I wanted to Whoop, where did I just go here? Okay, let's go back. If I want to change it, I would say, hmm, wonder if a an exponential might be a better fit. Well, you can do that. I would go back personally to more options. Um, where did, hmm, that's weird. Sometimes weird stuff happens. There we go. All right. Um, and then you can kind of play around and see all the goodies that come up. Um, and we see if we did an exponential regression on this, it gives you another, another function. Um, and your R squared is really bad. Look at that. It's like anything under 0.5 tends to be very weak. So it, if it's 0 0.1, your R squared will be minimum of 0, maximum of 1. A 0 0.15 basically, not very strong, not very weak. Very weak, I would say. All right, similarly, um, if you want to do a straight up exponential regression, you can do the same thing. Um, whoop, 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 whoop. I grabbed the. You can duplicate cells by clicking the bottom right, and I just did that. That's the error you just saw there. Um, it's also handy if you want to fill in 
Uh, if you've got a particular series of data you've got up, oh, I could fill in the... No, okay, never mind. Never mind. Just pretend that didn't happen. Anyway, um, I thought it would... It fills in series, but it, I thought it would go by fives if it detected the pattern. It's not that smart, I guess. Oh, well. Um, anyway, let's get back to the regression that we wanted to do. And I got to qu quit grabbing that corner. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, same thing. So where do I start? Insert. Yep. And then get a scatter plot. Add the trend line. Now this time, uh, again, if you want to see everything that you've got as an option, whoop. Why are you acting weird, Excel? More options. There we go. Um, you can look around as a power exponential. Um, and we see, oh wow, that's a very strong fit. Very strong fit. Um, y equals 5 times 10 to the negative 11th e to the 15 uh, 10 15 thousandths times uh, times e to the 15 thousandths x uh, and it kind of makes sense what I you might want to do instead if to get a maybe a uh, number with a little bit less weird of um, uh, less weird, like I shouldn't say less weird, um, but a more manageable number. If you don't really like working with really small numbers, you can change your year. Like let's say I want to set 1960 to be year zero. This is population over time, by the way. And then you don't have to worry about going up. Like, however many thousands in order to get there. And you see, it, it makes it a little bit more, you still have the e time to the 15 thousandths x, um, but your your initial, uh, base or initial value is, is uh, significantly larger. Um, it's really a matter of preference you will still end up with essentially the same thing. Look, at, notice how our R squared has not changed. In an R squared value of 0.99, that's pretty strong. So we can see some pretty clear evidence of exponential growth right here. Um, that is how to do quadratic and exponential regressions in Excel. Uh, practice that, and if you have questions, let us know. Have a great day.